So my name is Endre, Endre Shaira. Um, I actually, uh, I'm, I'm the VP of the uh, Advanced Solutions Development. Uh, so I'm running part of our R&D team. Uh, I've been with VM Turbo um, since we started the company. So um, I'm to be blamed for a lot of the things that uh, <laughs> our customers are running, uh, which is actually a lot of fun. And I actually work pretty closely with customers. Um, the, the, the primary focus of the team that I'm running is to engage with early adopters uh, and, 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 and get validation from them as we are developing new technologies as they are being incorporated into our, our, our GA release um, and, 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 and uh, both uh, come up with new solutions as well as to validate them um, and, and uh, um, see how we could do better. So. Um, a couple of things that we worked on um, uh, last year that are part of our GA uh, that I'd like to point out. It's all building on the same abstraction that Eric um, explained, but they're helping us to um, uh, refine what this desired state is um, in, in other aspects of the data center. Um, as, as, as you are probably aware, we are uh, making sure that, uh, for example, an application running on a virtual machine gets the resources that it needs, it performs. A virtual machine running on uh, compute and storage uh, providers um, your, your hypervisors, your, your storage infrastructure get the resources that it needs. Um, one interesting thing that um, um, what we, we find is, is um, as, as networks become uh, more uh, complex, um, uh, you have the ability to interconnect anything, anywhere, um, uh, but it's harder to predict um, what the performance of the applications that are going to be communicating across these networks are going to be. Uh, what, what people have tried to do in the past is to try to move VMs together, um, create a affinity rule that will force all those VMs on the same host. So they will be able to talk to each other pretty quickly, uh, but they may run into problems by not being able to get a CPU or, or storage or memory resources that they need. Um, so you try to put them far away from each other, but then you introduce network latency. So it is one of the trade-offs, as, as Eric uh, pointed out uh, that we want to um, help um, and, and solve. Uh, so in, in general, uh, we are looking at all these uh, variables um, along memory, CPU, I/O operations um, um, uh, across the different uh, uh, resources that that, that they, they consume, the, the supply, uh, be that uh, you know compute, storage, uh, resources across your private and your public cloud. Um, um, and, and, and then we also look at network. Um, and, and, and what we uh, want to find is this state um, in real time as your environment constantly changes that uh, assures the performance of the applications running in the environment in the context of all of this, in addition uh, with the addition of the network. Uh, so, so let's, uh, um, you know, what I basically described is that you, you put uh, VMs that are pretty chatty, far away from each other, you experience high latency. Um, uh, and, and typically, uh, if you just uh, look at any uh, randomly deployed uh, set of VMs in the environment, it's really hard to predict which application is actually going to talk to which other application uh, in, in the environment. Uh, so if you look at the, 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 net, the network flows in your environment, they are going across your spine switches, they are going across the leaf switches, and, and some by chance may be on the same host, but then they may not be able to get compute and storage resources. Uh, so what we do um, is, is we, um, in addition to mediating against uh, your, your virtual infrastructure, your storage infrastructure, uh, we're also mediating against your network infrastructure. We are taking advantage of flow instrumentation that is in the network, so we are aware, in addition to all the other um, relevant resources, both their demand, uh, how much of these uh, network traffic is being generated uh, between any pair of endpoints, any pair of application endpoints, uh, and, and also how, uh, sorry, switching quickly, and, and how, how the underlying infrastructure is being utilized, not just in terms of compute and storage, but also in terms of networks. And, and we, we basically drive a state where VMs get uh, placed uh, in real time as close to each other as their network traffic requires uh, to assure that they get high, that they low, low latency without um, causing storage or compute uh, uh, bottlenecks, um, or, or if they um, don't talk to each other, then they get placed wherever they best get, best get all their other resources. And this is, as, as with all the other uh, aspects, is a constantly changing problem because both compute storage as well as network traffic is changing constantly. Some applications talk sometimes more, sometimes they, they don't. Uh, so it is a problem that has to be solved constantly in real time to continuously assure the performance of the applications. Um, so, so the way we do this is that we introduce new entities um, to our, our supply chain. Um, what we do is we, um, on one hand, group together application endpoints, 
uh, that are frequently talking to each other, and we uh, call that a vpod. Uh, and then we group together uh, infrastructure components uh, like hypervisors and storage that are closely connected to each other. Um, for example, they are on the same switch, and we call that a vpod. And, 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 and what we, we end up uh, doing is driving uh, the VMs within the same vpod to be placed close to each other on the same vpod. And if necessary, we also are able to take a whole group of VMs, a whole vpod, and move them from one vpod to another, because if the vpod is not able to provide the compute and the storage resources, you cannot um, move a VM out of that vpod, because that would increase network latency. You need to move the, the whole uh, vpod together, which can be across different data centers, or even possibly across uh, private and public clouds. We had one question, Andrew, that actually came out, and it's from Julian, around some of the stuff around decisions that are made and why doesn't DRS do it natively, right? It's like, what, what's missing from just... Well, yeah, just had a, <clears throat> having a think of that is, yeah, DRS as a technology is all about moving things around to balance resources, but actually a great example would be doing the inverse of that, is to put two virtual machines on the same host that are network talking to each other a lot. Yeah, I was, didn't know it, if that's something you guys are doing, but I just thought I wondered why DRS didn't have that fun functionality already. I think the keyword you pick in. on there is balance. And balance is different in what <coughs> VMware's DRS views as balanced versus what your actual application workloads require as balanced. And what we view as balanced, and Andrew, you've probably got much better things to say on this. <laughs> um, so um, DRS solves a different problem. Um, uh, DRS is trying to load balance the utilization of the host or maybe the data stores. Um, it, it is basically looking at one host is a lot more utilized than another, which in our terminology is the supply, and it tries to reduce the load on a higher utilized host and increase it on an underutilized host, which is, is nice. Um, what we do is instead of, or independently, of uh, balancing the utilization of the supply of the provider of the resources, we are satisfying the demand. All of the decisions that we drive are based on how much resources uh, are, are needed for each one of the consumers of the resources and, and let each entity, for example, each virtual machine, on its own decide what is the best place to get its resources. So, so what, what, instead of balancing the load and hoping that a balanced uh, utilization will somehow um, uh, get, provide enough resources for the applications, we are letting the applications decide where they get the resources. The, 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 uh, the two things: one is that it, it actually assures uh, the performance of the applications. And, you know, obvious example: you take a completely balanced. Um, uh, uh, set of hosts that are running at 99% utilization. It's perfectly balanced, but <clears throat> nobody's getting the, all the resources that they need. Um, or, or you're running at a 10% utilization, completely balanced, but you're wasting a bunch of your, 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 your money. Um, what, we're, what, we are, what we are solving for is to drive both how resources are being allocated uh, based on the demand, and, and we're also driving how much of the infrastructure do you actually need based on the demand. How much infrastructure do you need? When do we need to consolidate or when we need to expand uh, the number of hosts in your data center, uh, the, 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 the number of network links that you have in your data center, the amount of storage infrastructure that you need, all based on the demand. Um, so it, it is not a conflict with the RS. You can still balance the load on the host. Uh, if you add VM Turbo on top of that, you're also going to be able to assure the performance of the applications and be as efficient as possible. Does this help? Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, thanks. Um, so the question: When you say that the the VMs or the applications decide where to go and get their stuff from, how does that actually happen? So VM Turbo, I presume, is some software. Where does it run? Okay, I think uh, we've got some good whiteboard time here. <laughs> if you want to draw anything up well, as well, we, we it's, a, it's actually it's it's actually pretty simple. So it's a it's a virtual machine. So it's an OVA you download from the website. Um, Self-contained, doesn't have agents. So it literally just sits on uh, a hypervisor, and we target the APIs directly for every technology. So vCenters, whether it's NetApp, OpenStack, um, whatever we target, is all done through that single uh, virtual instance. 
Yep. So a single one scales to about uh, eight to 9,000 virtual machines. And when you exceed that, you just add another one, aggregate them together, but no hooks or ties we plug in directly. And these are uh, taking the APIs to say, you know, execute that vMotion or resize it or change that reservation, change the limit. Um, any Anything that we do to those technologies and how we mediate are the things we leverage. Okay, yeah. That sounds which, really cool. Can we see that? Which is what I... <laughs> <laughs> I like pushing in a particular direction. I love PowerPoint. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. Love, we can, love it. I could do it all day. Sure. But I, we'd, love, we'd probably love to see the audience, really would love to see the demo. <laughs> Absolutely. Just throwing yeah, it out there. That's, sure. that's yep. fine with me. <laughs> I mean, if we said no to that, I would feel. <laughs> um, you'd, uh, you'd be surprised. You're in luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that will also allow me to shut down Skype and email, which I apologize for not shutting down earlier. Um, so. Um, did you, do we want to explain, I, I think maybe, um, just to be fair, if there, there's a couple things on OpenStack and... Um, go back to those after. In containers, do you want back. to go back to that after, or would go you guys back. prefer... Okay. Of course. Of course. Sure. So, so, so while, while Eric is switching, um, just, just one, one more um, comment uh, is, um, um, when, we, when we say that each entity, each application, each virtual machine decides for itself, um, what we mean by that is that we represent uh, each entity that exist in real life in the environment in our abstraction. Yep. It becomes an object in our, in our system. Yep. Um, and, and the decisions are actually made by these objects. Yep. Um, it's uh, a software in, model, yeah. So using an object. And then, and then, and then our, 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 ability, our mediation will drive these actions back in the environment and actually we really make those changes. Allocate more resources, move a VM, uh, clone an application. Um, so, so the decisions that these abstract entities make in our software or end up influencing the, the real life production environment in real time. Yeah, so that's a, that's a good question. So these objects in your model, they create, you do some math and that figures out what resources they should have and where they should need it. Do those objects themselves drive, like directly control the APIs or does that go up into kind of the, the controller module within your software and it executes those commands on the module's behalf? Um, so um, we've got a single unified control system. The decisions are made by uh, the entities, by, by the economic scheduling engine yep. for those entities. Yep. And, and, and when, when each, any entity um, identifies an action, that action is different through the mediation, the same mediation that we use to discover and monitor this infrastructure, we actually go back and execute uh, that action. We maintain reference ports like a, you know, uh, a UUID of a, of a VM or a UUID of a host. So, so when an action is, is, is defined, um, when, when it identified, uh, when it executes, it makes the appropriate API call to move exactly the, the real life VM or to clone the exact application uh, that where the action was coming from in our abstraction, in our sure. market. Okay. 